22nd of May 2012, four international aid workers were kidnapped in northeastern Afghanistan by a group loosely connected to the Taliban. In the capital city of Kabul, NATO Command Headquarters dispatched a handful of MQ-1 Predator drones to locate the four aid workers. Meanwhile, negotiations between the kidnappers and the Afghan national government failed to progress positively, and eventually British Prime Minister David Cameron authorised the initiation of a rescue mission codenamed Operation Jubilee. Jubilee's objective was simple, rescue the hostages and neutralise the kidnappers. It was to be a joint US-UK mission consisting of 28 British soldiers of the SAS, 28 US soldiers of Navy SEAL Team 6, an unknown number of MH-60L Black Hawk helicopters, two US Apache helicopters to provide fire support during the assault, and one AC-130 gunship providing overwatch across the area. Additionally, support was to be provided on the ground by a handful of Afghan commandos who were to seal off the surrounding countryside. There are further reports claiming that a small number of New Zealand SAS troopers are also part of the assault force. This has neither been officially confirmed or denied by the New Zealand government. Over the course of the next week, this force assembled at Bagram Air Base to the north of Kabul from where they moved to a forward operating base from which they had launched Jubilee if given the green light. The location of the forward operating base has for obvious reasons not yet been disclosed but is most likely in the area I have highlighted on the map. Further, NATO command in the country, in addition to Britain and America, had intelligence agencies located in the city of Faisabad monitoring the situation on the hostages, potentially indicating that the FOB was in the area of the city. At the end of May 2012, the Predator drones flying high above the target observed that the insurgents had separated the hostages into two groups of two and sighted them in two different cave complexes. Each group was reported to be defended by seven, possibly ten, armed men. With this latest development, the task force was split into two groups, with the SAS to secure one cave and the SEALs the other. For those responsible for authorising Jubilee, time was quickly running out, and at five o'clock in the evening of 1st of June 2012, David Cameron at 10 Downing Street gave the green light for the assault. Boarding their Black Hawk helicopters, the task force flew to a designated landing site that had been marked by Pathfinders, approximately five miles from the cave complexes. It should be noted that the distance between the landing site and the caves differ depending on the sources read. Some suggest it was two miles away and others up to 15 miles. To me, five miles seems the most accurate and is the one often reported. At the landing site, the two groups disembarked, formed up, and moved off towards their objectives. The time was around 1.30 on the morning of 2nd of June, 2012. On the 2nd of June, 2012, arriving at their objective first was the 28 men of the SCS, who got into position from which they could launch their assault in the cave before them. Not long after, word was received stating that the SEALs were also in position and ready to assault. The order to go was given. It was now 2am on the 2nd of June, 2012. Merging from their positions, the SAS moved in and killed two of the kidnappers who were leaving the cave. They then moved into the complex itself and shot dead the remaining three armed insurgents. Elsewhere, the SEALs engaged and neutralised seven armed insurgents and secured their objective. However, upon clearing their objective, they found no traces of the hostages, raising concerns for their safety and their whereabouts. This concern was soon alleviated when an SAS trooper radioed in that all four hostages had been secured alive and safe in the cave cleared by the SAS. With Jubilee completed, the soldiers and hostages were extracted back to Kabul. Their means of extraction varies from one source to the other, with some suggesting that Black Hawks were used whilst others state that RAF Chinooks ferried them out for the target. 3,000 miles away in London, Prime Minister David Cameron was woken up to be informed of the results of the raid. Upon their force returning back to Kabul, he personally congratulated the soldiers of their courage and professionalism over the phone. 